All right, I think that's enough time. So let's have a go at these together. They're pretty brief, right? I'm trying to get your brains just spun up for the day. When you have a look at a question like this, right, of which you're gonna have to be solving loads and loads, even if this is not the main question, this is like part of a question, okay? Clearly I've given you a nice sort of exact value there. So disregarding the specific question at the moment, I'm trying to like model for you what's happening in the back of my brain. So I would not write this down, but I'm thinking this as I look at the question, right? So if I've got something like this, you should have some angles popping into your head, right? Uh, I'm in radians, so what's the pair of angles that should be popping into your head as you look at this? Pi on four and three pi on four. Okay, now, well done if you got there. If you're not the kind of person who was like, oh, I instantly saw that, right? You can see I've drawn this uh, uh, set of axes down here. The question clearly does not ask you to graph, but again, I'm trying to model for you what's going on in my brain, which sometimes you don't see all of that working, but you're thinking it through, right? So here comes sine x. Now you're not required to draw this thing to solve the question, but it is extremely helpful to have at least a rough picture of this in your mind, because when you say sine theta equals one on root two, right? So one on two, root two is roughly there. Good morning. Okay, even without knowing where they are, you expect these two solutions in, I guess you can call it quadrant one and quadrant two, right? These are the solutions I'm after, and yes, they are pi on four and three pi on four. You could even use your calculator if your exact value brain is not quite there because it hasn't warmed up for the day, okay? So once you've got these two solutions, then hopefully your brain shifts to the next step, which is I'm not solving just a regular old angle here. I've got 2x. Now, this isn't a graphing question, but what effect does that 2x have on a graph like this? What does it do? Yeah, scrunch it. <laughs> Make it more frequent. It's going to be double the frequency within that same domain, actually within any domain, right? So, uh, you get the rough idea, okay? Again, this is just in my brain, right? So I'm going to continue this line and I get another pair of solutions. Now, if I was just thinking about the normal domain, like here and here, then in each of these instances I'm adding two pi. Two pi, yeah? So that would be eight pi on four that I'm adding to each one. So I guess this would be nine pi on four. And what would this one be? 11 pi on four, okay? But then the final step is, all of this has been solved for theta, which is, at the moment, equivalent to 2x. I actually want to solve for x, right? So what's the final little arithmetic step that I would do to go from these solutions to the solutions you actually want? Difference? You're going to be, Sam? Dividing. Dividing by 2. So all of these solutions here, all I'd need to do is halve them, right? And of course, that ought to make sense because numbers like 9 pi on 4 and 11 pi on 4, they're not in our domain, right? They'd be outside of it, but we're twice as frequent in that same 0 to 2 pi range. Okay, thumbs up. Having a look at this one, I've given you an exponential and I've said show all features, okay? Now, again, before you even think about what the features are, you should have a really rough picture of this thing in your head. You know what an exponential looks like. What does this minus 5 do? It's a, it's a vertical shift, right, downwards, okay? So we can go ahead and we can even very roughly just like pop that on, right? And I would literally do this. I wouldn't even start putting numbers on, plotting points. I would just get the general shape. Um, features, features for an exponential curve, what's the first most obvious feature that you can see which I haven't drawn on yet? It's an asymptote. Well done, Ben. So down here, you've got this horizontal asymptote. Normally, it's on the axis, right? So now, given this, where is it? It's at minus 5. Can we be even more specific? Because it's not at x equals minus 5. It's y equals minus 5. Okay, good. And now I'm ready to kind of work out these two things, and they're pretty much the only other features that I've got. This one's probably easier to work out. What is it normally without the shift? Normally it's at 1, so therefore I'm going to be at negative 4. And then what's this value up here? you're going to have to substitute in uh, y equals 0, and you're going to have to do some rearrangement, right? So that should give you, what do we say, log 
five. And you're pretty much ready to go, okay? Now what I will say is, owing to the fact that I did it so fast, quick and dirty, I'm gonna suggest, and I wonder if you can all spot it, there's one thing that I think is really wrong with this graph that you might, you know, lose a mark for it or something like that. We're doing this just to warm your brains up so not stressed about it. But if you saw this in the exam and you were the marker, you ought to take a mark off for that probably. Can anyone give me a suggestion? A few hands up. Okay, Tanuki, what are you seeing? My Y and X axis. Okay, let's put that on. I absolutely should put that on. And while I'm at it, I guess I should put an origin. That's nice, but probably like for a whole mark, especially given that you're probably graphing a whole bunch of other things. This is, at year 12, probably not what we're really assessing. So I'm gonna say this is a better graph than what we had before, but it probably wouldn't make a difference. I think this would still lose a mark. Does someone want to give me another suggestion? Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Oh, okay, all right, so I, you know, I just kind of went wee, and I wasn't super careful, right? So this feature here, all right, I suppose if you took a magnifying glass to it, like right there, I could fix that pretty easy, right? I guess I could do that. Are you, are you happy with that? It's a bit better, isn't it? Okay, so good pickup. What's funny is I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from all of you, like these are the things I've had marks doctor for me before. Okay, better, but I'm still missing something. What are you seeing? Okay, all right, so let's go y equals. I love how we are spotting so many things, little teeny things. I still think this loses the mark. Janine? Is it like the scale? The scale? What's wrong with the scale? I don't, was, was it that bad? What's going on? Atava, you saw it, I think, from the start. I don't know. Yeah, go for it. Okay, all right. Is there a point of inflection on this exponential curve? <laughs> Your face is like, uh, unless I don't know how to draw exponentials. For, in this case, no points of inflection, no, no stationary points, okay? I'm still missing the thing. Uh, we said scale. What about the scale? It's like minus 5, and then minus 4 is like really high off. Aha, uh -huh. like, okay, yeah. right. All right, now, admittedly, you might think, oh, that's a, everyone spotted other things first, okay? But I, I think this actually is worth highlighting. Look at this distance right here. See that? According to my graph, that's four units in distance. And then I'm saying that this distance here is what? I'm saying it's one, right? Now, if you, if you didn't, like, if you got a ruler out, and you're like, oh, it's not exact, right? It's probably fine. But that's a pretty egregious difference. Would you agree? Like, that doesn't even look close to a quarter of this distance, right? So that's a byproduct of how I sort of roughly and dirtily did it, but that's a little thing to watch out for. And interestingly, it was like the fourth thing <laughs> that people spotted. Okay, any questions? Does that make sense? 